I may now invite uh, Jacob Burgess for his talk on STEM options in primary and revision total lip. I think we're going to have some discussion at the end so we can have all the uh, speakers again together. Thank you. He's a senior orthopedic surgeon in the Department of Orthopedics, Lakeshore Hospital, Kochi. Thank, Thank you, you for being here, sir. Thank you. My brief is a talk on STEM options and uh, hip replacement. What do we type of STEM you use? First, you want to get a good press fit. So you want primary stability to avoid micro motion. The more micro motion you have, you're going to have fibrous ingrowth. What we're aiming is for bony ingrowth, but you're not going to get bony ingrowth throughout. So you might get a lot of spot welding. So you're going to have some amount of stable fibrous ingrowth and bony ingrowth. And of course, you have both ingrowth or on growth. The problem with ingrowth is that it takes longer. So if you get a poorer coated uh, stem is going to take longer to start holding on to it. On growth is things like in, uh, in the HA coated stems or in the grid blast systems, they're quicker to gr grab the stem, but on longer term, maybe the in growth is probably better than on growth. In clinical research, there's no difference. The problems with the stem is that if you have cobalt coat stems, you're going to have some stiffness ratio. The elasticity is different, so you might get some thigh pain. You get stress shielding if you have distal fixation, or if you got very rigid, you might get stress shielding of the bone. So in youngsters, when you're doing hip replacements in the youngsters, you've got to be careful. You have to think of the bone when you come for, prime, uh, for the revision. So that's why generally most of the unsimilar stems slowly change on to titanium rather than cobalt chrome, which are much more stiffer. And of course, we are also looking at proximal coated stems or proximal loading stems to avoid stress shielding and, and have good bone quality when you go back for revisions. There are various types of stems in primary. They're classified as metaphysical stems. These are the newer stems, which are the blade stems, which are only a medial lateral taper. So these are, you don't want to use them in osteoporotic bones, you might go further in. So this is the standard stem which we use, titanium stems. And then you have the, the uh, uh, AP and the medial lateral tapers like the uh, Corail, the CLS, which give you a bit more better stability, even sometimes even softer bone. And they essentially lock onto zone two and four. So it's just in the, not on the top end, but just the second layer of, uh, just below the lesser trough. That's where they latch on. But if you use these stems, you've got to make sure the distal part of the stem here should not engage the cortex. So if you use it in a champagne flute uh, stem and you end up, so you might have to ream this area so that you want to get all the hold here and not here. Then you have this one of the stems. So you have the metadiaphyseal stems the cone stems, which could be even used for revision stems. So it grabs both the meta and diaphyseal stems. I think we have the cone stems back in our country. You have these stems with the uh, S-clap. I don't know whether the Zoemuller stems are still available. They were available in the past. I'm told I've never used them. But they have excellent rotation stability. The splines in these cone, like the Wagner stems, give you rotation stability too. And then, of course, you have the stems like the Solution, the Eclon, which are distal fixing stems. Problem with these are they're going to hold on to distal. This is one of my earlier cases done in 2000. You can see the, the, uh, the uh, stress being transferred here and the stress shielding in the proximal part. So you tend to get distal cortical hypertrophy. So you don't want to do that in primary. You might, but you will want probably to do that in the, in the revisions because we may not have any good hold proximally. And then you have the modular stems. The advantage of the modular stems is that you can get both metaphysical and diaphyseal hold. So you could make it still distal fitting but still proximal loading. You could change the options of the offsets, the neck lengths, and of course, calcar replacement is there. So essentially here, you're trying to modify the stem to the femur rather than the other way around. But there's a price to pay for all this. You could cause fractures. So you got one more uh, junction. You can get fretting wear. You could got fractures. You, it is definitely useful in those difficult stems in DDH when you have uh, mismatches in the proximal and distal or high riding stems or when you want to correct deformities. This is a great stem to correct, uh, uh, to use so you can hold it distally and at the same time it will be proximal loading. And then of course the type 6 stems which are the anatomic stems which are slowly gone off and then again coming with, this, with the smaller stems they are coming in again they are, because they are more, you need a right and left side stems and it has to follow the bow. They are more difficult to put them right. But what is important is the type of bone you have. If you measure the ratio of the bone at the lesser, tuber, lesser trochanter and below, and there's more than 75, more than, five, uh, more than uh, less than 0.5, you could go for any unsimilar stem. But mind you, 
you got to make sure the stem should not engage, and I would template all my hips so I know where it's standing. So if I find that it's engaging here, I would probably use a iron nail uh, reamer and widen this area so the whole hole has to be here. In a type B stem, again, this is the perfect one for the standard unseminous, any of this type of stems. And finally, in the type C, when it's like a stove pipe, you generally go for similar stems, but in even this case, probably you could try and get a type 2 stem, especially in the patient, an elderly patient, when you want to do a bipolar and has got a major cardiopulmonary problem, so you don't want any anesthetic issues while you're putting cement, you could actually broach and keep, don't remove them, don't even use a reamer, you can broach and try and get some, you can compact the bone and try and get that, and which can work in a type 2 stem. As far as the revision stems are concerned, you finally want to classify them after removing the stems. So that's where you want to look. So you have to try and remove, the, leave, I mean, keep the as much as bone, and depending on the amount of bone removal is what the type of stems you're going to use. The type one is just like a primary. You have the entire bone there. You hardly lost anything. You could go for a similar or unsimilar stems. But, so you could go, in this case, I've gone for a C stem here. In a type two where you've lost a bit more metaphysical bone, you probably want to start going in for more unsimilar stems. You could precisely try and get any of the unsimilar stems that are approximately fitting, or you, if the bone is not good enough, you might want to go for further distal fixation. And then the problem with, uh, I mentioned earlier that if you use any of these modular stems, you can get these fractures, they're particularly common with a couple of stems, but any of the modular stems can break. But these breakers are probably due to either uh, the patient body weight or very high activity, or the Surgery, where you didn't get enough osseous support, if you have only serious, only distal fixation and there's no, hardly any proximal fill, you might break at the taper. And of course, sometimes implant related, where there were some changes uh, due to fret, uh, fretting corrosion, which lead further to fatigue corrosion. So there are changes in the implants done with these. So in a type 3A, you don't have any metaphysical support. You have to go for distal hold. You want to get at least four centimeters of hold. Ideally, it's two cortical diameters, so at least four centimeters of nice and tight scratch fit. It shouldn't go loose. So you, and the problem with the loose cement stems is that when they keep moving around, the surface is so smooth and that you can't go back and put a cement stem. So you might have to go further distally and go for an uncement stem. So this is one of the situations where we go for a distal stem. Mind you, all of these cause distal cortical loading. And then the 3B, again, there is no hold at all, so you don't even have hold distally, where you might have to use locking stems distally, the, the, the locking screw here is much more distal. In this sort of situation, you might have to go for locking stems like the reef stem uh, or the Esclap also has got a locking stem which can be used. And then, of course, the type 4, it's, there's hardly any bone left or probably this is where you want to either use an allograft, so you want to cement the allograft outside and then cement it in, in the distal fragment or you probably want to go for a tumor processes. Thank you. I think I'm in time, isn't it? Yeah, thank you, Jacob. Thanks for giving us a great overview of the STEM options.